My name is Nankis, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm, I'm gonna share with you my personal perspective about the internal process of leadership. So my story starts three years ago. I was 22 years old, and I used to think I'm pretty successful and happy. Um, I'll tell you a bit about my background. So uh, in Israel, we have this thing of going to the army. All citizens need to go to the army. Girls are going for two years, men are going for uh, three years. Uh, when we're 18, after we finish high school. So I went to this uh, unique intelligence uh, unit. Um, it was like working in a high-tech company, basically, but it wasn't a full-time job. So after a year uh, or so, I started, um, I uh, created a production company. So we produced events for soldiers and for high-tech companies, for fairs, and that was interesting. But after two years, I wanted to make a progress. So I started working for a startup company, and I did business development. And I remember that time when I was 22 years old and I was working on a company and I built a, a small company of my own and I finished a soldier. So back then in Israel, it was pretty young to do all these things because of the army. And I remember everyone telling me, wow, good for you. You're on the right track. Everything's going well. And I didn't feel this way. Um, there was kind of a gap between that. So externally, I had a boyfriend. I had a career. I just accepted to, uh, with a scholarship to the university. But internally, it didn't, something didn't fit. So there's another tradition, a great tradition in Israel, that after we finish the army, everyone's go to, going to travel. So usually people go for a year, um, they save money, they work, and then they go to area to travel and explore and just chill. So I didn't want to go for 12 months because that's a lot of time and I had a lot of business to do in Israel. I said, okay, I'll go for two months. So I left, I took a vacation from my job. I, said, I told my boyfriend, I'll see you soon. I went to Central America. And really soon I found myself in a meditation retreat. Now I never meditated in my life till then, but a friend recommended me. And I'm a very extreme person, as you heard. So after a week, I found myself in a 40 days silence retreat. So it means for 40 days, you're not speaking, you're just meditating, okay? So it's a really big gift to be in silence, especially for a person that speaks as much as I do. And what's beautiful about silence is it creates a clear mind. Suddenly all the noise from outside, all the external things, fade away, and you get to have really deep conclusions about yourself and about life. So one of the conclusions I had is, what does leadership really mean? Ever since I was young, people kept telling me I'm a leader. When I was in school, when I was in the army, in my career, you're a leader, you're a leader. But then when I was in silence, I started observing myself and my life, and I asked, am I really fulfilling this potential as a leader? And I realized I'm not. And the reason I'm not is because all the things I told you I did with the production company at the business development are not really things I wanted to do. All these things are things I did only because they counted successful, only because other people wanted me to do these things and I wanted their feedback. And being a leader is leading yourself first. It's not about just going and doing things. And I realized that in my life I was being led and I wasn't being a leader, I was living someone else's life. So leadership is internal. It's about leading yourself, having an independent will. And it's not about convincing other people what to do. So leadership is not something only few and talented people should do, it's something everyone should do. And what I realized in this silence is that actually leading yourself is the hardest mission of all missions. Because it's so easy to just flow with life and to do what everyone else is doing, but it's much harder to stay with your mind and understand what you really want to do with your life and be committed to that. So the silence gave me courage and clarity. Um, I got really connected to my essence, what's my mission in life, what I want to do in this life. And then I decided to leave everything that is not connected with this essence. So basically, first of all, I extended my trip and instead of two months for uh, 12 months, like all the rest. I said, okay, that's my uh, opportunity to find what I want to do in this life and implement it. And the next thing I did, I dropped everything that doesn't fit with my essence because there was too much noise. So first of all, I left Facebook, okay? <laughs> Today I'm already back on Facebook because I'm stronger, but then it was too noisy for me. Then I left my boyfriend, I, uh, I quit my job, which seems crazy that back then, and I postponed my studies in a year. I remember this Skype call with my parents, I was really scared of that, but they were very supportive. And then I also shaved my head, so if you're curious, that's how I look with a shaved head. <laughs> um, so anyway, I did all these things, and again, I had a gap. 
So externally, everyone thought I was crazy. Um, I, I'm a very friendly person, and I used to produce all these parties, so a lot of people knew me in Israel, and there started a rumor that I got crazy, I'm in a monastery in India, everyone thought I'm in India, because usually Israelis get crazy in India, so <laughs> that's, that's our thing. So everyone thought I'm crazy, and the reason I knew it, although I was disconnected from Facebook uh, with my shaved head in this monastery, is because everyone traveled in my age in Central America, so I saw people, and they're like, are you okay? And stuff like that. But internally, I never felt more sane in my life. And even I remember my sister came to me because she was so worried, and then she ended up also shaving her head and being in silence. <laughs> so that was also funny. So what happened to me in this process of connecting to myself and really fulfilling the potential of being a leader is I got committed to freedom, really to be a free person in myself and in others. So as I see it, being a leader is not about trying to control other people or to suppress other people's will to fit your will. Because being a leader, you want everyone to be free. It's not just about you doing and other people following you. And it sounds maybe selfish because I'm saying my will, my independent, but it's actually everything except selfish. Because in order for you to do that and to have an independent will, you need to be connected to a mission that is bigger than yourself. And once you're surrendering to this mission, you get to lose yourself and your identity, and that really gets a big privilege. So you lead yourself, you enable others. Um, so I'll tell you what happened. When I came back, I had a plan, and I was very committed to that. So I started a company named Zeze. Um, Zeze means in Hebrew, this is it. So basically, our mission is to enable young people to become alive. And the way we do it, we create young people an experience in which they work with their passion, they utilize their passion for a greater cause. Because we believe that if you work with what you love to do, you're happy, but if you do it for a greater cause, you become alive. So the way we engage young people, because you have so many NGOs that are trying to do it. So our way to do it is we create cool projects. We create unique and attractive projects. I'll give you examples in a second. And by the way, we are all students. I'm still doing my first degree. So all of you can do it while, while you're a student. So it can be an example if you have a good team. So we create unique projects. And then young people want to come uh, out of uh, selfish reasons. They say, oh, I'm a musician. I would like to be part of your project. Can I come? And it's like an internship for them. But then, that's the way we pull them, we like seduce them in a good way. Uh, and then they come to us and they get an uh, experience in which they give to others because all of our projects are serving a community in need. And then it empowers them and some of them actually become even after that social entrepreneurs in their community. And the reason I call it a company, although it sounds like an organization, it's because it's a company. We actually finished 2012 with a profit. The reason it's a company, we were not passionate about raising charity. Not because it's bad, it's just we, didn't, we were not passionate about it. So we said, let's build everything as a business. Let's create a business model to all of our projects. And that way, we're not, we not going to be dependent on other people that will tell us what to do. So I'll give you an example. Uh, we created a, an orchestra from street musicians. In Israel, you have a lot of street musicians that were not integrated in the music industry. So we created a band for them. We bought a musical producer. And we have a concert that we're selling across Israel. So for example, that's how it looks like. Yeah, yeah, you can go after the press, that's just, an it's just to see. So, for example, this project is something that is really engaging for um, young people that want to be uh, music, uh, music producers or want to work with musicians, so they come to us. It has a social cause because all these musicians are getting paid, so they have, uh, they have salaries. And it's also profitable for our, for our company um, because we sell concerts, we sell tickets, we sell these concerts also for companies. And then, um, for example, this project, we invested $20,000, and the revenue now is $100,000. So again, I'm not talking about millions of dollars, but in our community, it's a lot of money to create impact, because we get a lot of pro bono, and we have a lot of volunteers. And uh, another thing is we have some things that are just one-day projects, not, not something, something that is long-term, to engage also people that, for them, it's harder to become engaged. So we're doing uh, elderly days, a lot of uh, activities in elderly day centers um, that don't have resources to have activities. So do you remember the Harlem Shake? Okay, so we uh, brought young people that like internet and dancing, they're passionate about it, and then we brought them to Harlem Shake. So obviously that's just a silly thing, but it makes the, uh, the elderly people in the center are very happy. Young people are just having a day and they're, becoming, they're starting to be engaged and then they can become engaged in other projects that we're doing. Um, so this story is not, it's not about my company, it's not about creating a, a business with a social impact or creating a normal business, it doesn't matter. 
What matters is, is that you find your passion, whatever you're passionate about, and just follow it. Because if you have your passion and you're following it, you're really helping your community, whatever it is. And really, my biggest recommendation to all of the people in the room, no matter what your age is, even if you're 90 years old and you don't know what your passion is and you're not really living it, look for it. It's really important. That's the way to become alive. And if someone in this room don't know what his passion is, please come to me after this lecture. I have three questions to ask you. I need 20 minutes, and we'll have a better picture of it, okay? And that's where I want to have my 10,000 hours, so I would love to do it for all of you, okay? So just to tell you my personal story, so after you start following your passion and really becoming more an authentic leader, you start getting reflections in the external world. So suddenly I got invitations to all these steering committees and um, all these interviews and media and stuff like that and uh, international conferences and panels, but all these things, it's not about status. It's not like, oh, now I'm an important person. It's just a reflection of the fact I now embody an energy, a, a real life energy, because I'm doing what I like to do. And people feel it, and the world reflects it back. And I think all these reflections are good. It's tools to maximize your impact. So it's not something about the ego. If it's coming, it's coming from a real place, so it's amazing. So you can look at these reflections as a sign. So. I know all the things I'm saying might sound naive, like I'm talking to you about finding your passion, following it, I'm showing you some uh, people dancing and stuff like that, and you have some uh, people that are hungry in the street, they don't have what to eat, they need support, how can I talk with these people about their passion? So that's exactly my commitment and my passion in the world. So for the past three years and for the next 80 in which I'm going to live, um, with the help of God, so what I'm going to do uh, is to inspire people um, to look for their passion and follow it, and to create infrastructures and platforms that will empower them to succeed while they follow this passion. So that's my commitment, and I'm only one person. We have seven billion people uh, in the world. Um, a lot of them need help to have time and uh, opportunities to fulfill their life mission. So luckily, I'm not the only person who is committed to this mission. A lot of these people are sitting in this room, and even if we'll never work together directly, we are a global team waking up every morning for the same cause. And that's amazing. So just one thing that I didn't chose like my mission and my passion to uh, empower people to live their fulfilled life. I didn't chose it because I think it's more important than poverty or inequity or corruption. It chose me. It wasn't my decision. There is only one mission that you will feel alive when you work for it. There is only one mission that will enable me to start a company. Like starting a company is horrible in many ways. You need to do insurance. People almost get killed all the time. And everything is in your responsibility. No, because we're doing like this, these activities. So think about it. We, need, we have street musicians. They can get drunk, you know? So you have all these. You ha they're amazing. I'm not saying it in a bad way. So you have all these risks you're taking when you have a company. And the only reason to start a company and to do all this effort is only if you are very passionate about the goal. If you're not passionate about the goal, you'll just get bored. And you'll just, like, like Charlie said, like your energy will, that's what, how you'll fail. So when you look for your passion, remember, my favorite quote in the world, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. It's Howard Thurman said. So seriously, ask yourself what makes you come alive, that's the best way you can help your community. My last point for today, when you find your passion, protect it. I often get confused, like, oh, what am I doing? How do I need to do it? That's normal. But in the end of the day, I know I'm committed to my freedom. I'm committed to my freedom and to other people's freedom. And that makes me really calm, because I know that in the end of the day, and all of the decisions I'm taking, first of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure um, to my peace of mind, to my, to my bigger mission. And that's really important. And last message, like, in the good scenario, all of us have 90-something years to live. So make sure you're not living someone else's life, OK? Look for your passion, live it, embody it, work for it, and uh, you'll be good. So um, basically, now we're in the questions, but I actually have a question for you, OK? Because uh, I really can't tell you anything that you can't tell yourself. So I, I told you I have three questions. So someone here, all the people here that are not really, that don't really know, that are not really positive what's their passion in their life. So the first question for me, uh, like for you, <laughs> that I'm giving you is, please um, try to define uh, what's the characteristics of this passion. What do I mean by that? Um, which time are you waking up in the morning when you do this mission? 
Are you working with young people or old people or both? Are you doing it in your uh, origin country or all over the world? Are you working with the internet? Or, like as many characteristics as you can, all these things are hints to what you're supposed to do. And once you have all these characteristics, try to uh, have as many as you can. Like go to really small details. Are you wearing, are you wearing clothes? Are you not wearing clothes? Like everything you can, seriously? Um, then we can continue. So thank you very much and uh, I'm very happy to be here.